Happy summer, my friends. And in this video, we are going to do a set of digital SAT math problems. If you don't know me, hi, my name is Katya Sieberson. I've been an SAT tutor for over a decade, working in a true cutthroat environment in the New York City. And while I still work as a private tutor with a group of very select one-on-one -on -one clients, if you wanted to get direct help from me, you should join my membership program. My membership has been around for about three years now, and I have some exciting statistics to share with you. So for clients who attend 50% of my live classes, along with the one-on-one -on -one check-ins and complete all of the assignments that I personally assign into their documents, make an improvement of 150 points on average if they stay in the membership for about two to three months. If this is something that's interesting to you and if you wanted to be in a group, with, in a small group with a bunch of people who share the same goal with you, but have an experience of an individual program and get unlimited access to my brain and my experience, you should join the membership. All right, enough of the intro. Let's go inside and let's do some math problems. So my membership client, Lu Jian, just took her practice R test. I give plenty of R tests to my students to make sure that they know the format of the test and they are good with the cadence and the design of the digital SAT before they go in. So then after taking the test, she looks through her report. Then she finds questions that she wants me to answer and she sends them into something that we call Ask Katya. So I'm about to go through five of Lu Jian's Ask Katya questions in real time with you. All right, so the first question, question 22, after immediately looking at it, it looks like that they're going to be testing something that is called a linear graph shift. And when it comes to a graph shift, I always make my students remember that we have this slide deck. And in the second slide, we have these. This is when we're talking about vertical shifts and horizontal shifts. Because the line is going to be moving to the right, there's going to be a horizontal shift. So that means we're going to um, change what is being um, inputted into the function. So this is, needs to be happening. We need to keep that in mind. All right. But before I can work with this function, I actually prefer to rearrange it. And one of my clients likes to say, make it pretty. So we need to work with this function because right now we don't even see the y-intercept because it's not in a slope intercept form, not in the y equals an x plus b. So we need to make it pretty. So when we rearrange and isolate y by itself, we're going to have negative 4 third x plus 3. This is what our y intercept is currently looking at. It's 0, 3. Cool. And we are moving to the right by 3 units. So our input, we can actually change that from y to f of x is equal to negative 4 third x plus 3. And remember how we're moving to the right. So our input is going to be x minus 3. And we always say when it's on the horizontal axis, it's always lying to you. If it's moving to the right, we're going to put a minus. If it's moving to the left, we're going to put a plus. So here, instead of x, now our new input is x minus 3. So let's go. Negative 4 thirds times x minus 3 plus 3. Let's see what we get here. Negative 4 thirds x, that doesn't change. But then what does negative 4 thirds times negative 3? It actually turns into positive 4 plus 3. If we finish this equation, it starts to look like negative 4 thirds x plus 7. So what is my new y-intercept? My new y-intercept is 0, comma, 7. So this is the answer. So it looks like in this table, we're given a bunch of X values and a bunch of Y values. So we're given three coordinates and it looks like the solution will involve something in regards to a vertex form. Um, let's just go over the vertex form one more time. It goes like this, A X minus H squared plus K and H and K are going to be your points of vertex. Okay. Um, I would graph this because they're giving you these three points. Um, so I have two, two. When x is 2 and y is 2, we have a point. And interesting that y equals to 2 again when x is equal to 6. So either my parabola is a happy parabola and goes like this, or it's a sad parabola and it goes like this through points 2, 2, and 6, 2. And by looking at this middle, it turns out that it's actually going to be a sad parabola because this is 4, this is going to be 2, this is going to be 4, this is going to be 6. At this point, this is going to be my vertex because 2 
and 6 are equally distant from 4, we could assume that x, x equals to 4 is actually my AOS. And in my membership, AOS is axis of symmetry. So we can just say we can connect the dots and we see, oh, this right here is actually my vertex. So I immediately know what my B and my C are. How convenient. So I can rewrite this as f of x is equal to a x minus. So my x coordinate of the vertex is 4, but because it's inside of the parentheses, I'm going to say minus 4 squared plus 6. And now I'm given all of these additional points that could help me figure out a. So I'll just plug in 2 and 2. So when x is equal to 2, y is equal to 2. So we'll say a 2 minus 4 squared plus 6. 2 minus 4 last time I checked was negative 2, and negative 2 squared is 4. So then I have 2 is equal to 4a plus 6. And we subtract 6 on both sides, and we have 4a is equal to negative 4. a is equal to negative 1. Negative 1 is your answer for this one. Let's go to the next problem. Next problem. Interesting. Looks like a word problem. When it's a word problem, I usually use a lot of y equals mx plus b, but let's see. Oh, they're asking for a mean here. And if I'm not mistaken, I think this concept is called weighted averages. Weighted averages. This is when you're calculating your average, but instead of giving all of the data points an equal weight, you're actually kind of accounting for the importance of the data. So here we have 10 different styles at $25 each. And then we also have five different styles at $40 each. And they're asking you to calculate the mean price. I would do this. I would say 10 times 25, that would give me a 250. That would give me the total sum of all of the 10 different styles of brand X. And then I would say five times 40, and that would give me the total sum of all of the items from brand Y. Now to find the average, we would usually add them, right? We would do 450. I'm not going to do 250 plus 200. I'm sure many of you are just calculating it in your head. So it's 450. And I'm going to divide 450 by 10 plus 15, uh, 10 plus 5, which is 15. And that would be 30. That would be my average using weighted averages technique. Next question. Ooh, looks like a circle equation. I love circle equation. Um, let me just remind you what a circle equation looks like. X minus H squared plus Y minus K squared is equal to R squared. So let's map that out. So the center is going to be at AB. So this is going to be my center, A and b. So my value of a is going to be 5. My value of b is going to be 7. Don't think that it's going to be negative 5 or negative 7. It won't be because inside of the original um, formula for the circle, the minuses are inside of the parentheses. So a is 5, b is 7, and then r is 5. It's not 25 because the formula ends in r squared. So here we have 5 times 7, that's 35. 35 minus 5 is equal to 30. Oh, that's the next question. I think that we have two questions in a row. The answer is 30. It's it's trippy, but it's fine. Uh, next question, question 19. Oh, that's a good one. So what we're looking at is we're looking at a standard form of a quadratic. So standard form of a quadratic looks like this, ax squared plus bx plus c. And then they're asking you for the product of the solutions. When it comes to the product of the solutions, we actually have a shortcut. The product of the solutions is c over a and I know many of my students are resisting memorizing these two shortcuts. The sum of the two solutions is negative B over A. The product of two solutions is C over A. But I think here it will come in handy. Let's go. So they tell us that the product of the solutions is equal to ABC. Okay, but we can also calculate it ourselves by doing C over A. Our C is AB and our A is 49. And that equals to A, B, C. They need us to find C. No problem. We will divide both sides by A, B. And we can rewrite this for my own sanity. I'll just rewrite the first term as A, B times 1 over 49. And that equals to A, B times C. It's the same thing. But when I divide everything by A, B, just to make my life easier, and then 1 over 49 is equal to C. Do you have any more questions? That's it. We're done. So that was fun. And that probably gave you a taste what um, our test is. Fantastic platform, really good, reliable tests. Whenever you need to take a full practice test, absolutely use them. And them and I have become friends. And if you wanted to 
get a, an amazing discount, which is on top of all of the discounts that they already have on their website. Just use my name, Katya, and you will get another additional 25% off.